In today's video, let's dig into masking. In this photo, I want to mask out the butterfly. The easiest way of creating a mask is by making a selection of what we want to keep. A great tool for making a selection is the Selection Brush tool. Now that we have our selection brush selected, we can paint the selection. By making the brush bigger or smaller using the bracket keys, we can select more or less precise. Once we have our rough selection, which includes also areas that should not be there, we can press the Alt or Option key while using the brush to remove areas from the selection. Keep in mind that you can always zoom in, if necessary, while making your selection. This can allow you to decrease the brush size and fix the smaller areas. Sometimes it's not very clear what is being selected because of the marching ends. We can turn them on and off by pressing either the Q key or this button in the toolbar. We also have some options how the selection should be shown when the marching ends are turned off. The default is as overlay, which shows the not selected areas with a red tint. But depending on your need, you can change this to black, white or transparent. I'll keep it in overlay. As you can see, this allows me to find the areas that I might have missed in the selection. Once we finalize our selection, the next step is to use the refine action, which can be found on the toolbar. This quickly analyzes the selection and gives us options to refine the selection. Using the matte function, we can make feathery edges softer and more transparent. I'm just going to paint around the edges and let Affinity do its thing. Let's zoom into this part. Because I used the matting here, notice how the antennas are faded out. To fix that, I can change the brush setting to foreground and make it small enough so it will fit in the antenna. Now I can specify which area should be considered part of the selection. During the process, some areas outside the antenna were also added, but we can fix that by setting the brush back to matte and quickly painting over the unwanted areas. Let me repeat the same steps for the left antenna. Excellent! I think we are now ready with the refining. Before pressing apply, make sure to select the output you want. I want to create the mask myself later, so I keep it at selection. Now that we have an optimized selection, I want to convert this first into a pixel layer, make adjustments on it, and then convert it to a mask. First, let's add a pixel layer using the new pixel layer button in the layers panel. The selection should be still active. Make sure the color white is selected and from the Edit menu, choose Fill with Primary Color. Our selection is now filled with white. We don't need the selection anymore, so let's press Command or Ctrl D to disable it. Notice how we still have some gray areas in the pixel layer. These will be semi-transparent if we would apply this as a mask, so we need to do some cleaning. But before doing that, let's use the Multiply Blend Mode trick to simulate a mask. I will add a fill layer and make sure the color of the fill is black. By the way, you can use the layer, New Fill Layer menu to create a fill layer or define a custom keyboard shortcut like me. Let's move the black fill layer below our pixel layer. This also immediately shows that we also have some issues outside the butterfly area. We will fix that in a minute. Now, let's group the two layers and set the blend mode of the group to multiply. This will act a bit like a mask, where the removed areas will be shown in black. Let's start by removing the areas which should not be included. Make sure the pixel layer in the group is selected and press the E on the keyboard for the eraser. Now, with the eraser, we can remove the unwanted areas. You can always change the blend mode of the group back to normal to see the black and white version. Remember that white stays and black clears when we apply the mask. Let me continue to clean up the mask. Just keep in mind to remove the white areas, use the erase brush and use the paintbrush for adding to the mask with white. 
I can continue doing manual brushing to make the mask perfect, but as we have a pixel layer in white, we can also apply adjustments to help us. For example, let's add a levels adjustment above the pixel layer. By adjusting the white and the black level sliders, we can clean up these gray areas fairly quickly. Here is without the levels adjustment, and here is after the level adjustment. Notice how the levels adjustment also cleaned a bit too much from the hairy parts. Let's see how that affects the end result by changing the blend mode of the group to multiply again. Indeed, it feels like we removed a bit too much from this area. The cool part is now that I can use a black brush on the levels adjustment and paint away the effect of the levels adjustment on that area. Basically, masking out the effect for the areas it should not apply. Pretty awesome. Because we are still using a regular pixel layer, you can apply anything you need to make the mask perfect. For example, blur filters or copy paste and so on and so on. With as a big advantage, you can see its effect directly. Once we are done and totally happy with the output, time to convert it to an actual mask. We can make a duplicate of the group by pressing Command or Ctrl J. So we have a copy of the original group. On the duplicate, right click and select Rasterize to mask. And finally, hide the initial group. Let's have a look at the mask. We can do that by clicking on the layer while the Alt or Option key is pressed. Beautiful. I can now move the mask to the image layer so that only the image layer gets masked out. Let me add a fill layer, change the color to purple and move it below the masked butterfly. Actually, this looks pretty good, but in most cases you will have a halo color from the original image. To fix that, most of the time we can use an HSL adjustment. Let me zoom in and show you what I mean. As you can see, especially in this area, there's a green haloing going on. I select the color group in the HSL and use the picker to pinpoint the greenish color. Well, actually it seems to be more of an orange color. To make sure it fits more with the new background, we can shift the hue or in most cases just lower the saturation. Let me zoom out and increase the saturation so we can clearly see what areas are affected. It is the border area, so we can safely adjust the HSL values as we see fit to match with the background. Even though this works most of the time, it kind of fails when the border halo color is also inside the main subject. Another way to get rid of these halos and make sure that the masked image blends better is doing the following. Let's command or control click on the mask. This will create a selection from the mask. Now, from the Select menu, choose Outline. This will convert the current selection to an outline. The thickness of the outline can be controlled by the radius value in the dialog. I think in this case a value of 10 pixels will be enough. Optionally, we can add some feather to the selection by using the Select Feather menu. With the selection active, I can now add a recolor adjustment. Let's zoom out a bit and then zoom in to a more interesting area. If I modify the recolor hue to match the background, we get a perfect blend in. Let's quickly view the before and the after by toggling the recolor adjustment a couple of times. As a final optional step, we can give it a tint of color from the background. So I'm going to duplicate the purple fill layer, which acts as the background, and move the duplicate on top of the masked butterfly. I can change the blend mode of this new fill layer to color, which will recolor the butterfly. The effect is way too much, so the first thing I need to do is to lower the opacity to around 50% in this case, and then open up the blend options and lower the effect from the highlights. Let's zoom in and check the before and the after. Having that extra tint of the background color in the subject will usually make it fit in better. Here's a final tip before I leave you. If you want to have sharper edges, a quick hack is to duplicate the mask. The more you duplicate, the sharper the borders will get. This is because the semi-transparent areas in the mask are masked again. 
So for example, a 50% transparent area will be masked again with 50%, resulting in a final transparency of 25%, with as the result that there is less transparency in the borders. Hope this makes sense. Thanks again for tuning in and hope you found this video useful. Until the next video.